Hello Devcon Red Team Village. Welcome to my training Offensive Embedded Exploitation Getting Your Hands Dirty with IoT and Embedded Device. So those who have attended my brief here on day zero might be related to this talk till Recon and from Recon we are uh, deep dive into every subject. <clears throat> those who have not attended my uh, brief, it's fine. This is the more deeper version of my brief. Here we are going to this training is from zero to hero. Those who are a uh, bit familiar with web application testing or network pen testing, those who can easily grasp how they can jump from network pen testing to IoT or embedded device pen testing. Okay, so let's get started with the training. So the agenda will remain same as a brief. So agenda for this talk is first we will have introduction then pre uh, preparing arsenal that is setting up a sec uh, machine then reconnaissance show time getting hands dirty and fuzzing reverse engineering and exploit development so this talk is a split in a three major section first introduction and setting your machine getting up okay this is this will be similar to the brief uh, up to certain level then we will move towards recognition of device how uh, means what are the data we should gather for while doing a recon and uh, then we will have a firmware analysis so in this section we are going to cover more deeper version of what we cover in a brief so we will have a, what to look inside the firmware upon obtaining firmware uh, this section is quite drilled down in getting hands dirty this will be uh, similar to the brief and here we are going to conduct a dynamic testing on the device which we have targeted here and fuzzing reverse engineering and expert development this section is quite uh, heavy you may need one additional espresso for this as uh, here we are going to set up everything uh, from scratch to development exploit okay so this is split into total three sections so let's get started with the introduction let me introduce myself I am a Kaustub Padwar from India, uh, also known as security based on Twitter. I have a dozens of exploit uh, listed, which are most of the related to devices and some WordPress and some other stuff. And uh, also I am a Synac Red Team member. I worked uh, with Synac on their cutting edge technologies. And also I am a speaker. I like to share my knowledge. So now let me introduce IoT in more deeper manner i have classified iot in three sections here section one consists of iot's which is using at a large scale at uh, industries like multiple industries manufacturing industries government and uh, a cellular industry that is internet provider uh, isps then smart digital citizens then smart health agricultural industry smart building and uh, smart grid obviously and lastly a transportation industry so let's get into one by one with this so first get into a transportation industry so first transport is like uh, vehicle transport we have a brilliant example of how tesla is developing their vehicle iot car like autopilot which we used to see in movie now it's in real life so transportation industry is like remotely own the car last time i remember uh, charlie miller have presented their research on hacking jeep so what happened here is like in automotive automotive iot the car is get connected to internet and get controls via internet so this uh, this itself is a very big top, uh, topic like car hacking villages are there in our defcon only but uh, this is also a part of iot that is called automotive iot so where uh, they put some kind of embedded chips with some specific command which are totally closed source like you have to spend hours and hours and hours to reverse engineer those binary and identify those command uh, which can accept which which will get accepted in the car so in car world okay so we have seen that charlie miller's video of hacking car 
so like transportation industry uh, transport industry is using heavily uh, iot products now smart building in the next slide i have an excellent example of how smart building can be implemented as a iot product agricultural industry one of my friend himself have developed one uh, stack technology stack with one raspberry pi only that automating uh, water supply to his plants which at uh, which is at his home and which is at his farmhouse so what happened is like he took one sensor which sensed the soil second sensor who sensed the temperature third sensor uh, who sensed the wind uh, surrounding wind and uh, this all data is sent to the uh, his raspberry pi and once raspberry pi finds eligible that soil is dry and temperature is high and plants need a water it triggers a switch to turn on uh, the water supply to his farm so isn't it an excellent example of agriculture or <clears throat> smart agriculture or smart farming health is a critical aspect we are going to cover it here also but what different here uh, is like in industry is like they are going to do uh, in some companies are developing smart ambulance so you might be thinking what the smart ambulance is like once the patient is inside the ambulance this uh, some sensors will get connected to his body and the required data by doctor will be get triggered from those sensors like a blood pressure hemoglobin level and blood level in some means inside the blood level uh, then his temperature then his heartbeat uh, this all data will send immediately to the doctor so that patient don't need to wait till he arrives in a hospital and doctor can start diagnose remotely so doctor will start diagnose immediately diagnosis immediately so that if uh, if there is a critical case where urgent treatment is needed all you need is that iot ambulance once the ambulance reaches there uh, it gets connected to human body and every data that required by doctor will get uh, will um, received by a doctor and uh, according to that doctor can start immediate treatment so health industry is uh, medical iot is getting too much serious in nowadays and uh, digital citizen as we are digital like everything we have digital nowadays we we i hardly relate uh, i hardly remember that we are carrying old style wallets or old style watch nothing like everything is smart everything is fit in the pocket like we have smart fitness tracker smart wears then uh, smart bands everything we have the mobility wifi becomes the very big aspect in when it comes to iot because this services are provided by isp in mobility there are two types of uh, iot bands are there one is narrow band and second is lte and band uh, when you have a need to send a just bit like o or c like open or close kind of stuff then you need you where you don't need a too much data to be sent to over the internet you can use those small small uh, small or uh, small small devices which will send data to the user so uh, which will send data to the platform and those data will transport over nidd protocol uh, narrow band data most of the time so that is uh, that falls under ss7 security and smart government i have an other example in next slide regarding smart government and smart manufacturing industry so manufacturing industries needs to take care of multiple aspects that divide uh, if it is manufacturing some device then that device should not be break the proper qa testing should be done of that device and uh, to improve the efficiency and product quality these guys are uh, nowadays manufacturing using smart technology in uh, in when manufacturing industry manufactures something obviously they have to do some logistic right so for that logistic also iot devices are in use so like one uh, one fine example here is like uh, uh, any product which is getting melt for example ice cream uh, that if you keep, if you open the ice cream <coughs> uh, ice cream 
carrying truck uh, it will start melting right when it comes to room temperature it start melting or let's say if there is a, a fuel carrying vehicle like uh, oil or something if that truck gets open or someone may tamper with that uh, that truck that could be a big issue right for everyone so to avoid that there are some uh, devices which will image the uh, small devices very small devices which will trigger the data uh, using mqtt protocol and it sends to the iot platform that this truck was uh, this the door of this door of this truck was open at this time and that sends to the iot platform and iot platform will deliver uh, generate an sms alert and send it to the respective owner of that that your vehicle has been tampered or at that moment he can immediately call and get to know that why you opened my truck or why this tampering happened to detect such kind of tampers to monitor the fuel level like there are fuel theft uh, happens to monitor the fuel level if fuel level suddenly reduce up to certain limit it will send you uh, alert and cars are getting tracked like uh, to implement uh, sos button emergency button let's say if some driver is misbehaving with uh, some taxi driver is misbehaving with the passenger then they can suddenly push the button which will sends the current location of that vehicle to the nearest police station uh, using satellite so many things like you name it and iot is happening iot is, is too much like too emerging field uh nowadays and in, in every industries iot is in use so this we talk uh, this we uh, look about industrial iot now this part uh, i don't know how visible it is but this part is super critical like this equipments uh, here the loss of uh, in industry grade iot the loss is also huge but not a life risk but here in these devices like here are insulin pumps and a pacemaker let's assume that these two devices like uh, if you if you want to give some insulin shot to your loved ones and if it's a small kid and uh, uh, she is going to school and she is not able to take her own care or let's say uh, there is a grandparents who is not able to take a proper insulin on time so what happened is like at that time you can use those insulin pumps so uh, this insulin pumps are let's say use uh, you are using some apps to give a insulin shot to this guy that means this pumps are getting control from somewhere right that means this pumps as having remote access so now let's assume that if hacker got this access how critical it would be pacemakers are a major part of uh, life right of a uh, patient life so these devices are inside the body and it is controlling our essential things like a uh, heartbeat is the most essential thing of human being right so uh, these are the uh, wireless implantable medical devices which are really critical aspects of iot testing now others like apart from industry and human animals are also using iot so like uh, one company they are developing a belt which will be on a neck of a cow and that belt <coughs> will understand will that belt will try to understand and analyze the uh, animal or your pet and based on some behavior of that pet it will generates an alert and send it to the owner of pet like if say you have a good dog at your home you put a uh, that iot belt on his neck and now if he lost somewhere so like this, those uh, those pets generate some particular events so like uh, they might be look uh, here and there they might be run from here and there and based on that pa that pattern that smart belt will generate an alert and send uh, and it it sends to the platform and based on the alert platform will send you an sms that your pet is lost 
and his location is this or let's say you are uh, working a 9 to 5 in office and suddenly your pets develop a temperature so if temp if the particular threshold is hit that uh, iot belt will send you an alert that your pet is uh, having fever so kind of stuff so uh, we can track our cattle with this like location and all so everything so we can take with i with the power of iot we can take covers of everything right now as i told you we are uh, we can implement a smart building so here is a small example of how smart building can be implemented. <laughs> Kimo经理 the self-check-in machine, like the guest mobile check-in, like the robot service and uh, Timogenes uh, voice butler, the purpose of this kind of service and technology is to improve the efficiency of the service and the consistency of the service quality. Surely you like to go there and check in to see how they have implemented such a smart stuff, right? And now, as I told you that smart government, how can it be a smart government? Means how can I, IoT will be utilized as a uh, from the government perspective? So there is a thing that your tube light or your street light may costing you around five dollars per month. So that is sixty dollars per month you have hundreds of tube light inside the city right so approximately a 600 dollars per month for 100 lights right as they are running 24 hours that's why they cost you a lot now the company called quicktail have developed uh, one small nb iot narrow base uh, narrow band iot model uh, they called it b uh, they named that model as a bc 95g or bg 95g or something they implemented that module in a tube light, a uh, street light. So what happened if when the vehicle will come, then only the light will get start. And when the vehicle is passed, when no one is there, the light will get turned on. Here is a small, here is a small brief. As you can see, no one is there. All lights are off. Thank you. As you can see, the vehicle is passing, all lights are uh, turned on, right? This can save your lots and lots of electricity, right? This will save, this will save your electricity also, and this will save your billing costs also to the electricity. So, uh, government can implement this kind of stuff, means a smart IoT stuff, at a very large scale than even we can imagine right so as the iot is really powerful at uh, it's really great and it's really powerful with a great power great responsibilities do come right when i was a kid i used to heard the stories of witchcraft and black magic that people used to contact that uh, witchcraft man or black magic guy and they used to uh, give a contract to kill someone and that guy remotely manages to kill someone I don't know whether this is a fact or not, whether this is a true or not, but yes, I don't believe on witchcraft, but if you look at IoT, this is possible. Here is a great news. Medical pumps and pacemaker threat as a doctor simulated hacked overdose. Now, if I set your heartbeat as a 3000 bits per minute, who can save you from getting uh, cardiac arrest? No one, right? 
immediately will get a heart attack and you can die in a second. Similarly, if you need a 10 ml insulin in your body and if I give you 100 ml insulin and that to a 10 shot of 100 ml insulin, no one can save you, right? So this is a remote killing procedure. So what I'm trying to convey here is the device is uh, implantable inside the human body. So the security of those devices, if if at all it is remotely operatable, then should be considered as very high level. Now we are having a trend of having smart things like smart home, like Alexa, turn on the lights. It turn on the light. Alexa, turn off the uh, light. It turns off the light. We are having a spy robot at home to take care of our loved ones. Like if you're working and nobody stays at home to take care of your kid, you brought one smart robot. That robot is taking care. Uh, that robot is helping you for spying uh, across the home. Now, hacker utilizes the same robot to spy you. Here is a news. Hacker breaks into a smart home, play inappropriate music and communicate with resident via camera. So for our generation, it is okay. Like uh, we are, we are familiar with this thing. But for kids, it's super risky. For grandparents, it is again super risky. They might get scared if someone is sitting at you uh, on chair and somebody shouts, is, "Hey, take uh, wake up from the chair or get up from the chair." They might get scary that who is spying us, right? It's a really and critical aspect. Uh, to compromise a smart home and enter inside the home. This one is a industry level IoT attack. It calls OMG, Mirai Botnet turns IoT device into a proxy server. So Mirai is one of the biggest attack happens in IoT industry. And if you have not gone through it, you must go through it. I feel always like somebody is listening. So same thing. Again, you buy a surveillance system, that surveillance system turns into a spy system. Why? Because lack of security testing. I believe, like a product review, there should be a security review of the product also. Like, how this product is secure? Is it easy? Is it uh, good that I should take this to the home? No comments here. Ex Amazon employee says he turned off the Alexa in his private home. Maybe spy again. And FDA recalls nearly half of million pacemakers over hacking fears. Sim just I said that if you are able to remotely control these pacemakers, you can kill anyone, right? This is most critical aspect. So my talk, my case study for this is not that uh, which is a life, uh, a life risk created or something. This is about this decent looking IP phone. So the topic is. Can this decent looking IP phone turns into a botnet? So what do you think guys? Can we do it? Those who attended the brief, they might know. And why IP phone? Why I choose the target as IP phone? Because every company have IP phone. Every corporate employee have access to their IP phone. So the IP phone is planted in a such a way that ISP is internet coming to the IP phone. then IP phones, there is one LAN cable, it is connected to your PC and that will give network to your PC, LAN network. Most of the time, LAN network and IoT network are same. That means you can access your IP phone from your LAN network, right? Now, <coughs> first thing we ensure that we have access to the IP phone using LAN network, right? Now, remaining story, we are, uh, our training is based on it, okay? Now let's assume that a large company, large corporate having a 40,000 to 50,000 IP phones easily, right? In my company itself, there are 40,000 plus IP phones. Generally, these guys purchase uh, IP phone from one vendor. Like they, uh, if there is a Cisco, then you will see every IP phone is having Cisco network. I don't know the reason, but to maybe uh, to uh, maintain the network or to maintain the uh, to design the network it will be a useful right so now uh, one company is having 50,000 IP phone assuming that the second company also 
let's say a second large corporate is also having a 50,000 IP phone. So if you manage to hack one IP phone remotely, then you can turn those one lakh IP phone as your box. Isn't it a critical? And in city like a Mumbai, I believe you find at least one crore IP phone of unique brand, of same brand. At least one crore. As a Mumbai is a corporate hub or any in, in corporate hub, you will find one lakh IP phone, uh, one crore IP phone, right? And let's assume that five major cities of India like Hyderabad, Delhi, Bangalore, Chennai, and Mumbai. This uh, and Pune also. The six cities having six crore unique IP phone. Let's a wild guess. Now let's assume if this six major cities IP phone of these six major cities get compromised with your sophisticated attack against targeted IP phone. What do you think? If you instruct those bots to fire. 10 curl requests each to any big server, any big service provider company from Amazon, Flipkart, uh, Google, or Facebook. You think 6 crore into 10 requests per second, that is 60 crore requests per second. You think how long these servers can hold the capacity? And the also major aspect is it is coming from random sources. So like it's not that block one IP and you will end up. You have to block from six crore IP phones. Let's uh, have a wild guess. At least you have a 60 lakhs ISP or 60 lakh IP address from where the request is coming, right? So you have to block those all 60 lakhs IP, right? And it's a legitimate HTTP request. So one cannot just block a protocol. So this is a case study. So now we will see. How can we achieve it? But before we start, we need to set up our machine. So how can we set up our machine? Means what are the minimum requirement to get started with the IoT? We need the first important thing is a good operating system. And I believe Linux is the best operating system for pen testing IoT device. Why? Number one, it have a seamless integration with QMU and with QMU you can emulate any binary like uh, MIPS binary you can emulate, ARM binary you can emulate. So if you want to taste this, uh, you need a simulator, right? You can't buy all the devices like you can, you may have access to the 50 firmware, but you may not have access to the 50 devices. So in that case, you have to emulate the firmware. So Linux have a smooth access. Secondly, Linux provide the lowest level access to the operating system. So if it's not a, uh, if you connected a device to Windows, it uh, which is not uh, in of which the drivers is not listed, Windows will say unknown device, and that device will remain unknown till the time you find the correct driver. But in case of Linux. When you connect an any kind of device, any unknown device, Linux will at least give you something like something as in maybe a vendor ID, maybe a manufacturer, maybe a device type. You will get something and accordingly you can find your way for further testing. And also Linux have a huge community support. So let's say you buy some nasty product uh, like uh, which is not listed somewhere. You just connect it to uh, Debian, full size Debian. You may end up getting somewhere. Uh, there are drivers, uh, software to operate. So massive community support is uh, ha having to the Linux. And also the only operating system where you will find which you can find everywhere from routers to a POS machine. Most of these devices are Linux devices and some out of devices. So understanding a Linux is too much important to understand IoT devices or at least you need a knowledge of file system. Uh, if you have a knowledge of file system, then a Linux file system, then you it's uh, it makes easier to understand uh, the IoT devices. Now, data regulator. 
the de facto standard for factory purpose factory testing when you have to do a qa of device they will do it using jtag rxtx jtag and uh, test clock machine with that they will do it every most of the device some of the device don't have any interface to interact with there is no usb port there is no lan port there is no wan port there is no gpio pins or there is no uart pins but on most of the device you will find jtag port because it's a de facto standard for factory testing and to perform a complete test of device whether the functionality of device is working or not jtag port is present and in so in some cases like where you don't have access to anything of device it's a complete black, black box approach you may uh, end up with finding the pins with jtagulator and dumping the core data core uh, core uh, data uh, means dumping the firmware of device and with firmware we can do lots of things which we are going to cover in next slides and this is the api model as i told you uh, in previous slide there is a cattle tracker are building so what these devices do uh, is like they host one server inside your cattle uh, which is having a wide range of let's say 10 to 50 uh, 5 to 10 meters and they put a sensor like a bluetooth sensor or some other sensors zigbee or z wave data to test that the iot brings you a wireless inside you so most of the iot devices are majorly focused on wireless stuff so that devices are running on protocols called zigbee or z wave and to test those protocols we need one tool that is called api mote tool with api mote you can perform a zigbee replay packet replay attack zigbee packet injection attack and uh, and many attacks are there which you can uh, do with the api mote and lastly we need a connectors yes trust me connectors are the light connectors are going to help you everywhere where wherever you are going to test the iot device so we need at least extra one wan card extra one lan card extra one bluetooth adapter uh, and apart from this we need a screwdriver set to open any device also there is one smart device called shkira we need it to connect our gpio pins our uart pins our jtag pins all this can get connected with the Skira. So instead of purchasing multiple devices for multiple or uh, like UR to USB converter, then GPR to USB converter, you can simply buy one Skira, which will ease uh, which will ease your all tasks. And lastly, to hack the radio frequencies, we need a hacker. Okay. So these are the things uh, that uh, with which we can get started. And for advanced setup. You can build whatever you want, right? You can build such kind of lab. I got it somewhere from uh, Black Hat Live. So, the more devices will come, more uh, things like more chips you are going to build, and more connectors you are going to get, like from connecting, from connecting device to a PCB, and that PCB will get your UART port, and that UART to USB connect connector so this kind of connector you will need it for uh, till the um, it's as per need so as per need you can build those stuff so there is no restriction for making advanced lab as the connector will keeps coming in as the new devices will keeps coming in you can uh, start building your tools sometimes you uh, one day you will become more successful that you will start building your own connector okay uh, if you keep uh, journey if you keep, if you continue the journey of iot okay now this is all about a hardware requirement now what are the software that uh, we need for performing a pen test is it open source is it a closed source is it paid is it a free so the answer is most of the software that we need are open source there is the list of tools which i general which we generally require 
the i call this as a weapon if you are not from india this is a weapon of mother so our mother used to hit with uh, hit us with this uh, weapons okay so the weapon the first and most important weapon for our iot pen testing is a binwalk so binwalk is a tool of uh, binwalk is the greatest tool wrote by uh, mr craig hefner uh, known as a dave tyvis hero so this is one of the greatest tool that we need to perform firmware analysis so what is a firmware that we are going to cover so basically firmware is a file which is installed in inside the device it contains all the configuration of embedded device okay so to extract those file and uh, to extract that firmware file we need a binwalk without binwalk uh, iot pen testing is like uh, not possible at all uh, so binwalk contains of multiple file system binwalk is a multi file system reader we can say like a binwalk contains of uh, in windows you have seen the fat32 fat and ntfs of uh, file system in linux we see ext1234 operating uh, file system sometimes razor fs like uh, that's what we generally see okay but in embedded system the file system are completely different uh, than the file system are present in our windows and linux so this contains a ubi file system this contains a cram fs file system this contains a squash fs file system uh, this contains a uh, uh, ub reader we go squash fs uh, cram fs it contains it contains a uh, yz fs or something yfs file system so uh, multiple there is a list of 20 to 30 file system that are generally used in a embedded system so binwalk is a uh, lot we say it's a universal tool so what it does it does a signature analysis to identify which file system it in uh, the, the firmware is and once it identifies the firm, uh, file type it runs that particular file system reader now uh, it runs that particular file system reader and extract the required data from uh, the firmware file okay the second most important tool is a firmware so let's say you have a firmware but you don't have a device now what so like a virtual machine virtual box does not support embedded file system running so one guy called ccdc on github have developed a complete firmware emulation tool it's called a firmware so Formadine, Formadine is a combination of multiple open source tools like it contains a QMU, it contains an open source kernel, it contains, uh, it contains a kernel for MIPS, it contains a uh, kernel for ARM, uh, for a MIPS Little ADN, MIPS Big ADN, for every, every device, for every architecture there is a kernel and there is a uh, kernel and init RAM FS also available. Then, uh, apart from that it uh, contains a binwalk to extract the file system and then they are using postgres to uh, keep the archive of firmware inside to maintain the database of firmware the only problem with the firmadine is still now what i feel is uh, firmadine is not good at uh, networking end like to build a network uh, it most of the time it fails but it's not that tool's fault that it's as it's open source tool you could you have to deep dive into it and you can get it up and running so basically it is it used a qmu networking model so if you understand the qmu networking then you may uh, like it's like uh, first it extract the firmware then it makes a file system with their kernel and their init ram fs then it saves the file system as a uh, as a uh, in database then it uh, creates a tar of that database, uh, tar of that file system. Then it creates a squash FS image of that file system. Once the squash FS image is uh, created, it use uh, it reads the architecture by analyzing the busybox binary that which architecture it is. For example, if it's a MIPS uh, little ADN, then it loads the MIPS little ADN kernel and init RAM FS and QMU MIPS EL binary and it start it creates your virtual machine with a networking stack so firmadine is a uh, mixture of multiple tools and you can use it for emulating it's a really great tool uh, till now what i used 
Bob Suit is our loved ones. Like everyone knows here, hopefully. Or if not, then Bob Suit is a proxy tool uh, through which you can intercept the web request, right? So it's a proxy tool. And to automate the stuff, we need our Python. With the help of Python, you can automate most of the stuff that we are doing on regular basis. And lastly, the heart of embedded offensive embedded testing is Radar Pro. Sorry, Radar to know Ida Pro. So Ida is the great tool for reverse engineering. Those who are familiar with Ida, very good. Those who are not, so Ida is a binary reverse engineering tool with which you can open lots of secrets which are hidden or which are undocumented from you. Uh, you can easily identify. So Ida. Uh, Ida, it's not necessary that Ida Pro should be only used. There, there are other tools like Radar A and second tool is like uh, NSA Ghidra. It, it also offers a nice GUI. It's a cross platform like it's in Java. So you can run it on Windows on Linux also. And Ida works great on Windows. I have not used Ida on Linux. So these are the weapons. These are the mandatory weapons which we need for testing embedded system. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> now once you have set up everything, the first thing is recognition, right? Information gathering is the key of successful pen test. Same applies to here. The more you get information, the more you uh, come up with the knowledge of product. So here we have split. Uh, here we have split the recon section into two parts. One is active recon. Second is a passive recon. So first we'll have a look at a passive recon and then uh, we will have a look at a active recon. So in passive recon, these products, when these products are a global seller, they have to register that their product with the FCC ID. With every device, there is a unique FCC ID assigned to the device and uh, that you can look up on a back side of the device so generally it is on the device itself you may see ce uh, written something and there below fcc id equal to this this so why we need to uh, read about a fcc id there was an incident which happened with us that uh, there was a ip phone only <laughs> uh, that vendor was fighting with us uh, that vendor was saying that uh, this device don't have wi-fi we have read the specification of device and in that they have clearly mentioned that there is a Broadcom wireless chip installed inside the device. Post that we have opened that device and demonstrated them that the, there is a chip of Broadcom wireless adapter. Still he was denying that no, no, this is, this is not a Broadcom chip, this is something, something different. Then we customized their firmware as we have, as we perform mostly a black, white box testing. So we customize their firmware and once the uh, we uh, insert the module which support which loads the Wi-Fi driver uh, and uh, we have installed appropriate Wi-Fi driver for that uh, device and we get up running and then tell them uh, then told that vendor that see your device have Wi-Fi and finally he agrees and he lies for some reason I don't know. So FCC ID is a document where you will find all the specification of the device. Okay. Second, uh, first is FCC ID. Second, every IC details is available online. So you may buy one, magnif uh, one magnifying glass. Uh, I don't have right now with me. And you should open the device PCB and you should look for the IC that what IC is installed. And uh, about uh, regarding that IC identifier, you can uh, search online uh, what did I see is then you can draw a PCB board and you try to connect the dots on PCB so that uh, you get a better understanding of PCB uh, PCB of the device right so uh, also with this you should ask more and more and more and more and more documentation so like uh, you should ask for the product data sheet you should ask for the user manual you should ask if they are maintaining a security document. You should ask for the algorithms that uh, that are used inside the uh, inside the device. Uh, you should ask for the uh, debugging uh, document. You should ask for the troubleshooting document of the device. You know, you should ask for the user manual we cover, right? 
magic number generation algorithms uh, which is used inside the device so as much as the document you should be never satisfied when you are asking for the document you should always keep asking like give me more 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 so i'll tell you why we need uh, why the documentation is important so here is the thing as you can see in this document they, uh, they have listed down the protocols what are the protocols that are in use here you can see this device support sip version 2 that means you can if you are able to successfully MITM uh, in in between the communication of IP phone with a uh, with the SIP server, and if you are MITM in between, and if you are able to identify the correct codec, then you might be able to listen a conversation happening over a IP phone. And similarly, this device doesn't support a SRTP. That means this uh, as the protocol document said that this, this since this device support only RTP that means you can also if it's a RTP communication you can do MITM and you can listen what bitching is going on right so uh, this document uh, this document say suggest us that this supports only SNMP v2 right uh, it's not a vulnerability itself but we come to know that SN, uh, we, we can interact with device we using SNMP also also you might see in this is for some of these uh, you guys might have seen this for first time so this protocol is a tr069 protocol which is used to reconfigure the device which is used to configure the device it uh, this is called a technical report 069 with this uh, with the acs server acs server is something new to you might be so ACS server with ACS server you can communicate to device over TR069 protocol to reconfigure that device. So you can configure each and every aspect of device with a TR069. Even you can push a firmware upgrade with this. Now a user manual. These are the basic documents which uh, we are talking about now. A user manual suggests us that device have a upgradable firmware. Means you can easily upgrade the firmware web management interface so 8443 running device have web interface so I, our ip phone have a web interface now device have password management so device can account uh, make a accountable password device have a remote and local uh, syslog support 514 must be open auto provisioning of device using ftftp http and https then SNTP time synchronization that's okay multi user level so if some smart guy managed to change the password of his device from admin admin to admin 123 still there are accounts like support take user agent kind of accounts which you can access with their default creation like user user you can log in tech tech you can log in support support you can log in so this kind of account exists in real life in device testing so this should be your slogan i want more i want more i want more and default pc communication type is bridge default username for admin mode is admin great uh, default username for user mode is user default password for web is null what so they so they design a device they put a web interface on it they created users but they forgot to set the password who cares right Till now, most of the guys who are watching this stream might not be aware that their IP phone got a web interface, right? <laughs> so, if if we don't know that uh, there is a web interface exists, then who cares about the web credentials, right? But hackers cares about this. So, default password for web is null and default web login port. So, you don't need to perform nmap also. Like, to access the web interface, you can just connect to IP phone with 8080 port and you will get the... Uh, connection i heard that you like algorithm so i use an algorithm to pick an algorithm to generate an algorithm so why algorithm is important why reviewing our algorithm is the most critical part algorithms are used for two purposes in device generally one is to generate a magic number and second is to generate a password so uh, let's say vendor x decide to manufacture the wi-fi router right 
now they they have generated they have produced 1 crore to 2 crore wifi router and as per minimum requirement each wifi router should have unique uh, wifi password right otherwise if you give a common password for across the vendor then anyone can connect the anyone can connect to the uh, wifi router right with the common password so generally these guys have a random password for each router so how how what do you think how they are managing it like to maintain the data of uh, hundreds and crores and uh, tens of crores of router uh, that uh, the password for this wifi is this it's a hectic task right so what these guys do these guys writes an algorithm to generate a password let's say four digit of last four digit of mac address plus date and time last four digit of mac address plus two digit of serial number plus uh, time or sometimes last four digit of mac address plus or uh, time as a random seed and uh, last four digit uh, and uh, last four digit of serial number or mac address and uh, time as a seed to create a password so these are the simple algorithms and why reviewing this algorithm is important because if if the algorithm is weak then all your product security is waste like if I use a MMDD uh, as a Wi-Fi password for a device, then anyone can connect with MMDD to my uh, password, uh, to my router, right? In default state, I'm talking about. Even if you are uh, using time as a SRAND, current time as a uh, S -rand random seed, and you are using MAC address as a uh, input, and uh, you're doing a RAND on MAC address and generating a password, Still, it's used. Uh, still, it's an easy way. Like you can sniff a MAC address uh, by capturing beacon. You perform a SRAN on it or RAN on it, and then you get get a uh, Wi-Fi password, right? So these are some weak algorithms are in use, which should be take care. Now the magic number. What is magic number? In device, there are some super interfaces which are not accessible for everyone like for a few device there is an engineer page few device have a tech support page few device have a debug page few device have a uh, debug mode itself but to enter into that debug mode there are a task like uh, there was one device which I tested uh, for to enter in the debug mode you have to press a reset button seven times then only it will enter into a debug mode and at debug mode you get a shell of the device that's why it is important uh, some uh, devices having a slash tech support page tech support.html slash super user.html slash uh, some random name like uh, i don't even remember that name dot html but to enter that page you need to enter some magic password and that magic password was again generated by algorithm so to uh, they run an algorithm on like I explained earlier and it will create a string that string they use as a magic number to access those device okay so this uh, so these are the checklist mostly which we needs to take care uh, while doing a passive recognition of the device now let's come back and look at the active device active recognition first and most important thing is to know your device so what are the what are some common things that you know about a uh, device like uh, as this uh, let's assume this as an ip phone as your target what are the common things like a classic and uh, network connection is like it must have a lan port it might have a wireless it might have a bluetooth it might be uh, it might be get managed with a tr69 it might have snmp it might have ssh it might have a telnet it might have a web interface so these eight uh, techniques we can guess from this phone that this phone may have this eight techniques. apart uh, these are uh, these are these connection models work almost everywhere with most of the devices uh, which are enterprise devices or uh, let's say home devices this kind of techniques work but uh, there are few more uh, protocols that are only in that are supported only in iot 
like uh, have you heard about nidd the nd iot devices works on nidd so it's impossible to track uh, it is impossible to uh, capture the communication until unless you break a ss7 second adb interface most of you might be knowing it and that nowadays devices are coming with a android so adb is also a good entry point for us uh, third uh, do you guys have a, a cable setup box which uh, which we say a classic uh, cable tv setup box so if you have that setup box you might uh, you might want to take a look there is a uh, usb stick connected to it so why that usb stick is there because usb stick is a way to interact with device so once you plugged in that usb stick there and with us with some specific file it turns that device into a debug mode or it use the purpose of that is to use that usb stick as a uh, firmware upgrade but with a firmware upgrade you can also trick that as a uh, turning the device into debug mode so there are ways apart from usb stick sd card is also there so like uh, same same like usb you can use sd card uh, some protocols like zigbee z wave are used widely in iot and lastly a bluetooth energy attack also apart from this some devices have very close source ways to access that device like as i told you in connector section there was one device it was nothing but nothing was there it was just a modem and one mcu that mcu was doing uh, some operation based on the jtag input so uh, not jtag gpio pins so once pin sent an input to mcu mcu used to perform some operation and send data to the modem and that modem was sending data to the platform iot platform so to interact with that device we finally give up and uh, we ask vendor that uh, hey can you tell us that how can you interact with device so he told us that uh, there is one chip on that chip you have to put that device and then it connects uh, it creates a com interface with a uart so now uart to chip uh, sorry usb to uart uart to chip and chip to that device so so there was a uh, there was a modem debug interface was there using that pins you are able to reconfigure the modem and mcu uh this that was pure iot device which we have tested last time and uh, so these are the specific uh, specific things that uh, we need to take care on the recon section now uh, now in active recon itself you don't have to stop with a port scan only like in in network pentest we generally perform a, a subdomain enumeration and a, full core scan and directory brute forcing and file brute forcing kind of stuff here in recognition there are few other aspects that needs to be taken one under in under, while understanding the device we have to identify which architecture this device is using whether it's a arm whether it's a mips mips el or mips uh, big adn or arm which version of arm it is using uh, we can identify that with a version of basic box that device is using in the embedded device due to lack of space this all guys mostly use a busy box as a kernel as a init rd as a, uh, a as a list of binaries so busy box is a multi call binary which basically it describes in easiest way it's a multi call binary it contains lots of tools uh, in one busy box only some vendors customize the busy box and remove uh some of the files which we are going to talk uh, in further section uh so based on the busy box we can identify which architecture of devices and also we can read some fcc id stuff or document review based on it we can identify now second aspect is to identify underlying os uh, so some devices might show you some ui only web application but you have to identify what that uh, device is like underlying it's an android or it's a linux or it's a rtos or some other operating system so once you are able to identify that operating system you can map your device properly and you can perform a directional 
proper direct you will get a proper direction for testing also uh, identifying uh, identity uh, as uh, we discussed we have to identify the proper interface to interact with device and then we uh, then we can act accordingly one thing is like whenever you get a lan port or wan port means you get a tcp connection you should always run a and map on all ports why here is a uh, here is the thing that i got a remote code execution on this 1380 port and denial of uh, service like distribution denial of service on 4046 and 41565 port so like i was able to remotely crash this device and i was able to execute a code on this device and this was a end user device so end user device means uh, like uh, 70 to 80,000 devices was in uh, was live. So if I just fire a blindly payload that connect to 1380 and install listener net, uh, netcat listener, I may get those those many bots on public network. And also it was listening on a public interface. So that's how it becomes critical. Now show time. So here we are. Uh, uh, here we are uh, done with our first section now we will now we are having a firmware analysis uh, section in show time now let's get started with the show time in this section we are going to cover a firmware analysis of the device so agenda for this section is uh, identifying what is the firmware obtaining firmware Unpacking firmware and finding vulnerabilities inside the firmware. This so is basically what to look inside the firmware. So, what is firmware? Firmware is a file which contains three major sections. One is a file system, second, kernel, and third, bootloader. So, a file containing these three sections is called as a firmware. So, there are majorly two types of firmware available in the market. One is a full firmware which contains a file system kernel and bootloader and second there is a uh, delta of the firmware so what happened is like your firmware of let's say i'm using a samsung phone the firmware for samsung phone is around one and a half gb now there was a malfunction the camera is not opening or upon opening the camera it is getting crashed so uh, now samsung have identified this problem and they want to ship a new firmware to your phone and device are device are market device in market are millions of devices right so they cannot uh, just recall all the device and flash with the new firmware so what they do sending 1.3 gb over internet is also a ridiculous task so what they do is they just identify the, that difference and send that difference to your device so that difference may be in a kb or maximum in a mb it is called a delta of the firmware which contain the difference from your existing firmware to new firmware and that delta uh, is delta is also secure like one delta cannot be set in other device or it have a authentication mechanism it have a keys which uh, with which device is signed okay now what are the ways to obtain the firmware the most legitimate and easiest way is to download the firmware from their website if they are providing so if you visit any router website or uh, product website they might they sometimes offer you a firmware for upgrading uh, your local device okay so that is the uh, most easiest way second is obtaining from update whenever you get a system update on your android phone you just set up a wire wi wi-fi uh, mitm bridge like creating one uh, access point and you can check for update from there and as you check for update uh, if the form update is available click on download and keep a capture on on that bridge so you can capture that firmware using uh, firmware update next extracting from the device as i told you uh, we are using a jtag where there is a no way to interact the device with jtag uh, with the jtag connection you can also dump the complete firmware from the device and google docs always win you can search for index of or FTP, uh, FTP of the product name. You may get a uh, firmware and analyzing device traffic. So what this is analyzing device traffic. Sometimes you may uh, wake up and see your phone got restarted without any power issue or without any issue. 
so what happened the vendors most of the time sends a silent firmware upgrade so it uh, uh, like if there is a changes uh, which needs to be applied on device on priority they shoot the firmware at night time when generally when you are sleeping at that time they send a firmware upgrade and sometimes uh, if there is a critical update device needs to get restarted that's why your phone you might found uh, your phone is getting restarted for no reason so there is a silent firmware upgrade so what you can do is like at my home i have set up an interception server so every traffic is get captured there so if there is any firmware upgrade i used to get from that interception server base. so analyzing device traffic is also one way where you can obtain the firmware now you have a firmware now what you have to don't uh, you don't have to run a binwalk hyphen me on the firmware file that is the most inappropriate way to approach the firmware so what you can do is first perform an entropy analysis to identify whether firmware is encrypted or not if the firmware is encrypted then uh, if the firmware is encrypted and if you run a uh, binwalk hyphen me it will create a huge garbage of gbs and tbs and it will pull your hard drive it happens to me that's why so first thing you should do is to identify whether the firmware is encrypted or not as here you can see the line is complete from one and only here there is a little drop if there is a one line is at one level that means the firmware is completely encrypted and these drops this line drops suggest that this portion of the firmware is not encrypted so what you can do in such a case you you can run a tool called dd uh, those who are using linux might be familiar with the dd those who are not uh, then dd is the lowest level uh, this uh, data analysis tool or like data extraction tool so with the dd you run uh, you run a dd on this specific offset of the firmware and you can extract those data so what happened is like once I was lucky enough to get a private key for decoding firmware that uh, when I was able to extract when I extract this data, small data, and uh, uh, once I was lucky uh, using hexdump, I got a, a password to extract the firmware inside the uh, hexdump. So it was a open SSL encrypted firmware, but I don't know how they forgot a password inside that. And uh, uh, later, uh, you can perform a signature analysis. So Binwalk provides a signature analysis feature with which you can identify which file system uh, is inside the device based on it. Uh, so Binwalk E is used to generate this entropy chart, what you can see here. Now, well, now you got a firmware. Now what? So you manage to get the firmware. You manage to extract the firmware. Uh, like we are having uh, we generally perform a black white box testing because we have a limited time to give a sign off to the device so like we receive a device we have to share the result of uh, sec uh, security status of the device within 10 to 15 days so we generally prefer a white box uh, approach so if the firmware is encrypted we ask the vendor to provide us a, de a decrypted firmware for security purpose and all the precautions like uh, non disclosure agreement are in place so assessment is a proper so vendors uh, most of the time they share the firmware now what to look inside the firmware so first thing is sbin slash busybox you should do you should look for the uh, busybox binary uh, and you when you run a busybox binary uh, you will come to know that which architecture of this which architecture this device is using second a shadow file and passwd file to identify what are the accounts are there inside the device third you should look for the document root so uh, doc document root is the basically uh, source code for the web application of the device where you uh, from where you can find the entry point to the device via co uh, with uh, via identifying vulnerabilities like code injection vulnerabilities it's easy to perform a source code review on uh, document root of the device it's not so huge third you can take a look at the application binary as i told you embedded is like a we have very small world so in that small area we have to fit all the application logic all the application pages and uh, this what we say uh, document root inside the binary itself 
So in Embedded, there are uh, multiple web servers which you might not heard of. Like uh, Go Ahead is the web server, Boa is a web server. So these are gen uh, these are some web server which are used in a embedded operating system. And BusyBox HTTPD is also used as a web server. And uh, in OpenWRT routers, there is a HTTPD uh, from uh, what we say light uh, light HTTPD web server. So they have a document route, you can perform a security check. And this is quite uh, important, like find slash uh, name dot sh and uh, type file and permission triple seven. So if you found this file and you are a normal user and let's say uh, you can, let's say this file you found as a cron job, you can put a additional command inside it, like add user. And when that cron job get executed, uh, your user will add it as a root user, right? So you can basically perform a privilege escalation with triple uh, seven executable files, or you can also execute those files by modifying and adding commands. So always be careful when giving triple seven permission to any file. Okay. Now, uh, what more you can look uh, apart from this? This is like a standard Linux document. In device, you should look for the tr069.con that contains the tr069 configuration where uh, you may find a path to the private key file. With that, private, uh, if the CA pinning is unable, you can use that pr private key file to uh, connect with the ECS server. You can uh, check for the SQLite DB. In this device, there are very small databases which maintains the user access to the web UI. So you can find look for the SQLite DB. Also, you can look uh, as I told you here shell script. Uh, also, you can uh, you have to look for all the binaries which are non-standard. Like uh, if you name if you Google Google the name of that binary, and it appearing. Uh, you can check for the security of that binary. Like uh, like libcurl is the most common library and binary is used inside the device. Uh, for example. Uh, DNS mask is the most common and widely used binary in the de device. So you can check the firmware version of DNS mask. You can check the firmware version of libcurl and you can uh, search online for the also attack associated uh, with this binary. So like uh, Google have recently discovered seven major flaws in the DNS mask which allows a memory leak and from memory leak you can uh, execute the command. So it was a remote code execution on IoT devices using DNS mask binary. Also, you can search for the hard-coded MD5 some uh, hard-coded MD5 hash, uh, hashes, which uh, you can later decode to obtain a password. Also, you can search uh, SSL related file or uh, certificates, uh, database related files and uh, binary files which you can uh, later reverse and identify a critical aspects or critical vulnerabilities of this so generally what happened here there are uh, i have a market download firmware which i used to share with the public and generally give this as a task so if you are interested you can take this as a task uh, after this training and you can solve this this is a uh, firmware analysis slide four okay so here you have to identify what web server is running inside the device uh, here you have to identify the password. So this is a kind of hands-on. You have to find the upgrade ways. Uh, you have to find the ways to upgrade the device, and you have to find the employee of the company. You can write this. Uh, you can write the answer of this talk. Uh, you can write the answer of this on comment section. Now, if DevCon Red Team Village allows, then, or you can answer. You can write the answer of this on Discord server. Okay. Now getting hands dirty. So if you remember uh, at the beginning of talk, we are talking about uh, how this recent looking IP phone will turn into a botnet, right? So getting hands dirty is like here uh, we are going to set up, uh, we are going to start a dynamic testing of the device uh, as we have, as we gather too many data from this firmware analysis section now we have to use this data for uh, our next section right so that is dynamic testing section 
So you can identify all the web application entry points using firmware analysis. You can identify all the CGI pages or CGI action or the parameter which is used for, uh, used in the device from the firmware analysis. Uh, so you don't need to perform a major task uh, that is content discovery for the device security. As with the firmware, we get all of the details most of the time. Okay, so if there is a uh, like uh, if you are good with the Linux, then you can run an init tab file and from any tab file you may identify uh, what are the aspects uh, that are getting called, what are the services that are getting started inside the device. So this kind of stuff you can identify from the firmware itself. Now it's time to connect. Uh, now it's time to get your hands dirty with, uh, with device testing. So uh, if you remember in initial setup, I asked you that we may need a additional uh, LAN card. So if you have a router, then it's fine. If you don't have a router, you may uh, use one LAN card as a DHCP server in your Linux box. Okay, setting up DHCP server in Linux is quite easy. So first thing is we have to ident uh, we have to identify uh, the way to connect an IP phone. So when I got this assignment for the first time, I was like, what to look in, what to look inside it, right? And this is just IP phone. Like I have to make a call. What is the security that we are going to take care? Then later, uh, uh, later after thinking for a while, I got that this device have a IP address. And as we read the document, we come to know that web interface is there. So uh, so I got a charm and I started testing. So I set up a DHCP server on my Linux laptop and connect one end to the router, uh, sorry, one end to the device, IP phone and uh, one I got a, I got one lease for my laptop. Okay. And then uh, as this got IP address, I was able to ping that device and I run a full port scan on the device. As discussed, that NMAC should be run as a full port scan on device because you need you don't know what surprise uh, it can give you. So here is the port scan result for this. So I'll zoom it into it. So here we, I have started the nmap uh, ping not scan with a full port scan and aggressive. This was a IP for uh, this was a IP address of IP phone and uh, output all the files as a IP phone demo with a T4. So this was a flag I used. Here you can see I found one telnet port open on this. Here it is saying saves of alchemy from the telnet d okay and the 53 port was filtered here on tcp so later i come to know that uh, 53 was the udp dns uh, udp port uh, of dns mask it was open on dns mask udp and 80 port was open so that means the http service is running there and 443 was open so ssl was running there and apart from this more interesting stuff found i found here that this device is running linux 2.6.x more precisely uh, more precisely here is the takeaway from nmap that uh, uh, you remember we had a, a document review and we found that username for admin is admin and just give a gave a wild guess try for the password that admin admin and boom what you got you name hyphen a Linux 2.6.36 and UID 0 that is root shell. So with the one shot with a one and map uh, with the one simple and map command I was able to get the root over this device with the default root scan. But here here is the point that we are researchers we are not a hacker. So we need to secure device from hackers. So we need to make a device hacker proof. Okay. Then we uh, then once I got the root. Uh, I added a backdoor for it for making my access persistent there, but I started again the testing. So I found uh, we found that web server is 82443. We found one more port 7547. Here I or uh, here is the port. It is open and unknown to nmap, and uh, 53 was filter and OS guess what nmap gives here is to do, it it should be between 2.6.17 to 2.6.36 and here we get a exact version 2.6.36 kernel and it's a MIPS kernel okay so if you search for this version 2.6.36 uh, 
linux kernel exploit you will end up with a five at least four to five pages on cv database right there could be a privilege escalation website uh, exploit there could be a remote code execution website or there could be a mini exploits could be there right so as you can see how poorly this device is configured right now setting up a web interception for this device obviously the first step when we get a web interface as a security researcher or as a hacker the first thing what we do is add a bug so this was ip phone i added a bug suit here and this bug suit was uh, in between my laptop so sometimes uh, there is a trick like sometimes device don't support a proxy connection like if there is a proxy it will drop immediately so what you can do is like uh, you can add a add switch proxy or as a proxy proxy kind of plugin uh, which which you can immediately switch from one proxy to other proxy and then you uh, get first normal communication working and suddenly turn on the prox proxy so that you can capture the request i don't know what is the exact reason for this but this works so most of the time so if the device is not getting uh, connected or it's not sharing the proxy then i used to use this trick now once you set up everything interception and the first thing you are going to do is log in here with the admin and a d m i n admin here you can see the request is going with admin admin and this request looks pretty uh, pretty plain go form slash webs login uh, interface is getting called and here is the uh, here is the redirect that this is redirecting to status status basic dot asp so this will be uh, take you towards dashboard and as an admin admin you hack the device now okay and after browsing for a while i got one request set system administration with a go form so go ahead is a web server uh, which i asked you to identify okay sorry don't you think something is missing here those who have attended the brief talk may know this those who are not attended the extreme option is missing here so as extreme option is missing that means the you can do a click jacking with this device and here you can see with this request you can configure every aspect of this device like user type is admin user admin username is user admin admin password is admin and uh remote web login support is disabled oh they have disabled the remote web login wireless web access is zero so uh, if you are connected to wi-fi also you can access the web port lan web port is 80 uh, dbid web port is 80 dbid web ssl port is 443 web timeout is 5 web remote legal ip is 0.0.0.0 so one side is saying that uh, you should not be able to access a wireless uh, you should not be able to access a web interface on wireless and oh it's enabled sorry and web interface can uh, web interface web remote legal ip is 0.0.0, .0. so anyone on the network can access the web interface of this device also here you can see telnet remote legal ip so anyone from the world can telnet to this device as there is no blacklisting done on the device so radius shared secret is not present here or radius vendor id radius vendor access level is not mentioned here is the malicious string cn.pool.ntp.org so this device is communicating to the chinese ntp server and taking time from there right so what you can uh, uh, so here in this one request you can configure everything but what is missing here uh, this device uh, this request don't have any uniqueness right this is a web parameters this is a cookie and this is a standard data which flows around so there is a no cross site uh, no nonce is present here which means this is vulnerable for request forgery so make a note of it this device is vulnerable for click checking 
this device is vulnerable for request forgery now while browsing uh, make a note uh, just make a note of this to interact at the system level of a web inter uh, device using web interface there are two most of the two common ways are there one is the diagnostic page with a diagnostic page here in management page or firmware upgrade page uh, or this is a diagnostic tab is selected here you this uh, diagnostic page is provided to ensure the connectivity to uh, capture the packets or to trace the route uh, whether device is connected to proper uh, end or not but what they do is like they take the ip address from here pass it to the system call system call takes a system call calls the ping and make a ping request uh, to the address and uh, print the data here only so instead of ip address i give a output of i uh, here i give a input as a backtick id and it says bad address but it executed the command and gives me the uid of device so code execution web interface is accessible remotely that means it's a remote code execution vulnerability we have in this device with this you can get a root easily easily you can get a root all you need to type here is ncf and lvp and your port like 137 once you enter that port you are good to go you got a remote code execution on the device right so the second way is to look into the backup file click on backup file if that backup file is plain uh, you will see you are able to see a more parameters than a web interface into that backup file let's say telnet enable or disable ssh enable or disable or some other uh, ways uh, some other parameters which are not listed in web, uh, web portal you can see it in a backup file so you modify that backup file and upload it back to the uh, device and your telnet may get start up and running ssh may get start up and running so there are many configurations so that is the second uh, say that is the second way uh, through which you can interact with a device means device core operating system underlying operating system from the device web ui okay and uh, uh, and uh, as device uh, keeps coming you may find more this interfaces are generally vulnerable for cross site scripting kind of vulnerabilities i found one sql injection also lfi also so OS top 10 is also applicable for performing this so now we have a ui readdressing we have a csrf we have a shell command injection all you need to make one fancy page add a payload of command execution and just host it to somewhere and share that link to a corporate guys once they click on that link it call it creates a click uh, it forms a click jacking attack with that click jacking attack it will uh, contact to your local ip phone login with the default credential and execute a command csrf command to the device here is the poc which i have created for this attack we have updated the policy of organization kindly click on i agree for accepting the terms once you click on i agree it executes the command on the device so this is how a simple looking ip phone can turns into a botnet so hopefully you might like this attack now uh, the oh i think this is undocumented here so once you got the shale now what as i told you we are we are a security researcher and we are not a hacker so we have to make the device completely unhackable right that is our target is people may say security is a myth but only we know that how much we are putting effort like everyone is working on network security application security and cloud security and they are trying their best to keep their uh, security service super secret uh, like super secured right so once you by exploiting this uh, web service uh, you may get you may obtain a root here like ncf and lvp uh, 1337 or telnet d uh, hyphen p 1337 so you get uh, access to the device now you have to perform some internal testing please note that this section was not covered in the brief 
so the so first thing like we have to do a full device compromise you got a code execution with that you can uh, get a reverse or bind shell of the device also may, you can write a data inside the rc script you know to maintain the access like every time uh, let's say device got rebooted so still you need uh, your shell so you can write uh, telnet d hyphen p137 in rc.local file so once the init process is complete you can uh, your access will still be persistent or you can write a ip table rule like ip table in input chain write accept like this action bin busy box telnet d hyphen l bin slash sh on port this or you can uh, or you can write your init script and lastly you can malicious the or you can flash the malicious firmware through which you will get a full device compromise as like uh, like access should be a persistent to the device uh, to perform further testing once you got a uh, full device access uh, what you should look inside the device you should look for the vulnerable components inside uh, installed inside the device like uh, as you are uh, just a second So sorry. Uh, then you should look for the vulnerable component like etc shadow, g shadow. You should look, and here are uh, then you should look for the vulnerable uh, libraries. What libraries like a libx part, lib euclipse, uh, then uh, lib curl, lib open ssl. Some devices are using lib ssl from 2006 package. Like it's already outdated, right? Uh, some expert library was there and uh, like many libraries which are used in device are not always updated so you should look for that component and also you should look for the software install like if uh, like for red hat we use rpm debian we use uh, dpkg and for android we look for the pm list packages so uh, unnecessary like if you are uh, using a setup box at your home and if the messaging app is installed then there is a no use of messaging app right someone may uh, and if that messaging app i think it's a broadcaster or something like you can trigger with malicious app you can pop up a sms inbox uh, sms uh, you can demonstrate the sms inside the stb which may lead to a further financial fraud and you can look for the app in system apps or preview apps or vendor app then you can look for the core vulnerable software like if there is a java install so what version of java is in use what version of php is in use then you should take a dump uh, which version of open ssl is in use and uh, you should take a dump of apache 2 or light httpd document root and you should check for the smbd config, uh, configurations also uh, with uh, these are the four aspects which uh, you should ensure uh, in system uh, internal testing like what is the os config you can get it with uh, uname hyphen a you can see what are the modules are listed you can see what are the file system are supported uh, you can see uh, what cpu they, it is in use what memory that device is using and you can see what are the usb with ls usb you can see what are the uh, so with LSPCI, you can see what are the PCI models that are connected to that device. So you to identify uh, the vulnerable uh, com component or to identify the vulnerable function of the device, and you can ensure the OS security with uh, whether AC Linux is uh, what is the status of AC Linux uh, in environment. Is there any vulnerability are there or any hard coded configurations are there? You can list out the sysctl parameters. You can check for the aliases, and lastly, our favorite cron turn. Cron plays major role in uh, devices. Like uh, you may, uh, most of the time, I am able to successfully, uh, I am <coughs> able to successfully escalate privilege with the cron tag. And then you can identify the what are the vulnerable network function or network component with the uh, what into how many interface are there in device like some device may have 8 interface 16 interface in enterprise gate device you may find a 16 or 32 lan interfaces then uh, what are the service which are listening 
लाइक एन एस एन एम पी इज देयर और नैगियोस इज देयर और एस टी टी पी इज देयर एस टी टी पी डी इज देयर एंड हियर इज आई फाउंड सम यूजर लोकल कस्टम अपाचे तो दैट अपाचे वॉज कस्टमाइज विथ मॉड्यूल एंड एंजिनिक्स इज रनिंग ऑर देयर यू कैन चेक फॉर द नेटवर्क कंपोनेंट लाइक वॉट आर द इंटरफेसेस आर देयर वायरलेस इंटरफेसेस वायरलेस लिस्ट ऑफ वायरलेस इंटरफेसेस वॉट आर द आई पी एड्रेस दैट डिवाइस है वॉट आर द ब्रिजेस दैट इज लिस्टेड देयर वॉट आर द राउट इट इज फॉलोइंग and ip uh, ipv6 route so you should dump this information and keep it stored somewhere like device important information now you got all this data inside one file right this uh, this this all data this all data and this all data now the challenge is how to transfer a data from device to your computer so the easiest way is to use a netcat so like you start a nc listener uh, on device with inputting that file and then transfer it to the uh, then connect uh, your laptop with uh, that uh, port on using nc you will get all the data second way is uh, to download a data from uh, world to device we can use a wget if wget is supported or curl is supported and uh once we obtain the binary let's say uh what these guys do is like they disable a listener mode in busybox <coughs> in netcat uh, in netcat of busybox to secure the, the, to prevent a data leak on the device so in that case we have to install our own busybox and uh, we can transfer the data uh, with netcat by installing our own customized uh, netcat or own standard netcat basically the customized net uh, netcat is used by the device vendor to prevent a data leak then you can transfer the, if there is a, a sd card functionality then you can connect a sd card uh, with sd card you can transfer the data with adb push pull you can extract or put uh, push data uh, inside the device and in this next example we are going to use some proprietary commands like ftp gate and ftp pull so i am going to show you uh, some proprietary commands like you have to perform a command analysis that which command will possibly help you for taking the rk out or uh, put pushing the data inside the device okay and the permission obvious i don't always review a cron tab but when i do it's on production server i don't always ch mod but when i do it's ch mod triple seven so cron job plus ch mod triple seven is the deadliest combination you can uh, achieve a privileged connection let's say uh, cron job is uh, in device cron job is running for process monitoring purpose uh, for uh, uh, for upgradation purpose for running uh, log rotation purpose so many cron jobs are there in a device so what you can do you uh, and uh, poorly configuration permission with a cron job like a cron job file is running uh, let's say cache clear dot sh is a script file which is running with a triple seven uh, with uh, as a root cron job so what you have to do you have to do a add user x or add user hacker uh, you have to add that command inside this and then your user will get added or you can execute any command with a root user and also you can make a persistent access with this like uh, you can write a ip tables rule there or you can write a nci fn lvp so at particular time uh, when this cron job will get executed your backdoor will be open right so in system in uh, internal testing we can test this aspect also hopefully you will like uh, this section and now at last we are going to touch base our last section of the talk that is causing reverse engineering and exploit development and now grab your espresso because cappuccino is not going to help you you need more caffeine and more coffee we are going to touch the last section of the training that is fuzzing reverse engineering and exploit development so this is going to take uh, i think one more hour and this is the last section now uh, as till now we perform a firmware analysis we found a ways to get a root we perform system internal testing so we have secured our device too much like right? and now we have to secure a device from zero day attacks 
that is memory corruption vulnerabilities like stack overflow heap overflow those kind of bugs like memory corruption bugs so for that <coughs> we need a expresso first uh, and uh, once we had expresso we are good to go so first thing before starting this section is we must have a root with us why we need a root uh, or we why we need a shell so the first of the, that you will come to know in the next few slides the first thing is getting the root is the most important uh, part of this testing and as i told you that we are a researcher we are not a hacker we have to uh, make a device 100% secure from hacking so for that we have to do a fuzzing on every entry point of device so in this section we are going to cover http fuzzing those who have attended brief uh, can connect to dot now and those who have not attended the brief uh, can understand this very uh, can start understanding this very thoroughly okay now uh, first thing is to getting the root and the ways to getting root as discussed is like exploiting web vulnerabilities like with uh, exploiting your web vulnerabilities you can get a root shell second you can perform a firmware analysis you may come up with a backdoor account or some hidden services or hidden ways to connect uh, the device with a shell uh, you can perform a document review some vendors neatly document a debugging process of their device so how to enable a debug mode uh, then default credentials like always work we got a root by telnetting just binary uh, with admin admin and lastly the reverse engineering section so uh, just for an information this device is not the same ip phone which we used earlier this is a gpon device uh, the x advisory for this device has been already published uh, with prior information and proper disclosure policy responsible disclosure okay so let's get started upon looking index 2.asp file we come up with following interested code so this is the firmware i extracted and this here i see that if request form username should be tc web api get account entry one and username and h then else if request from username tc web api get account entry zero and username then if username value is account entry one username should be string this string okay so it's quite obvious that tc web api is the interface which is interacting with the database of a device so quite sure about the logic that there is something called tc api binary who is responsible for accounting like admin account telnet account ssh account kind of so we double confirm uh, the same using ssh file so tc web api set account entry is commit flag e commit flag tc web api get web user custom entry and you, here also you you will see tc web api uh, ssh entry active so uh, we from this code uh, we can guess uh, no we are sure that ssh user is also accountable via tc web api then i spend a lot of uh, so first i spend a lot of time on document root that how this account is uh, is getting authenticated and then i come to this index.asp a basic login page and from there i get tc web api and also i checked for the tc web api for ssh and here i come to know that ssh entry is something uh, if the ssh is active then uh, it is writing asp.write checked and uh, means to for SSH account also TC Web API is responsible and for web account also TC Web API uh, TC Web API is responsible. After spending countless hours on reversing TC Web API, I found the interesting stuff. So here you will see the strings. This is a radar to interface and this is disassembly. This is a function available uh, inside the radar. These are the symbols. And I found that SSH entry active in room file.cfg. So when I do this cat room file.cfg and grep for SSH, here I found that SSH entry active is yes and SSH username is admin. 
and SSH password is obviously this is modified a uh, fuzzy demo so you will find this this is a console password string dot console password length is 15 console account password is lead, uh, is equal to 21 and here you will find SSH search web entry also uh count username web password console password auth mode and somewhere here is a call of ssh i'm not able to get it right now okay forget it so uh, after uh, after spending countless time on reversing this binary i found that ssh entry is active uh, in room file dot configuration so when upon looking for the room file dot config j i found the SSH entry active yes and SSH username is admin and SSH password was there in a plain text. Now, first thing after getting is to log in the device and check for the environment NPS. So I did SSH to the box uh, this on this particular Skyver uh, ONT Jipon. So the algorithm was Defi Hellman Group One SHA supported and I logged into device and I see the processors. So this is the list of processors here you can see at the pre id 381 the boa server is running then i check for some uh huh and now after logging to device i have seen for the commands what are the supported so here you can see when i run a command busybox there is there are only this many options are available CP cut, hostname, init, IP kill. But if you closely observe this, there is a no way uh, that net stat is there. And that net stat is, was not on listener mode. So you know, I found one interesting command here called FTP get. And after running that FTP, FTP get command, I found the option of this command was remote host local file remote file so basically we can get the file uh, by typing the remote host here and the local file name and remote file name so I went to the TMP which was writable I get I did get FTP get uh, and this was my server where I use, hosted a FTP server and I downloaded the busy box for MIPS directory and uh, mkdr cannot create a bin file exist uh, okay so i think busybox was there already and then i created a folder called busybox uh, bin folder here and it was already present that's why it pop up error and then i installed the busybox here with busybox hyphen hyphen install and source folder is slash bin and then i run busybox see the commands available this is the power of visible as you can see here a list of commands very low and here you can see all commands are supported by our busybox binary so busybox binary can be downloaded anywhere so this is the content of busybox uh, this is the content of slash tmp and now we have uh, everything like this is uh, we set up our environment for first for getting things ready now after getting our own custom busy box with all functionality of Linux available, we will move towards next thing that is making device fuzzable. Okay, so by default, some settings are not applicable, hence, we have to make this device fuzzable. So, here you can see the first thing I did is enable a core dump. So, core dump is disabled in most of the uh, things. So, here I did eco hyphen n slash tmp slash core dot p that is process and enable it into proxies kernel core pattern so core i said uh, core pattern is core.pid then i set up a u limit what is maximum possible once you did this once you enable a core dump you have to restart a web server so here i saw the web server i get it uh, ps hyphen aux pipe grip boa so it is not supporting u option so again i did ps hyphen grip uh, boa and i found that uh, boa boa was running at ps uh, pid 381 then i killed that pid and restarted that pid with the argument which was listed on the ps okay so this is a bin by boa binary location this is a ch root and i'm starting this as a daemon mode 
okay and now our device is ready for fuzzing once the device is ready for fuzzing we have to start the fuzzing so this is a http fuzzing for fuzzing we have to make sure that we are going to fuzz each and every request with each and every parameter because you may uh, you never know which uh, at what level you are going to get what surprise so here is the first page that is admin login i clicked on login and one more thing if you try to if you pause the pre login pages uh, that is unauthenticated pages there is a very chance of getting unauthenticated rcs and obviously we know that unauthenticated rcs make more impact than authenticated ones so as here you can see i logged in with the credential then i uh, send this request to intruder and i said i selected all parameters here and this is my first list uh, where there is a 1 2a 5a 10a up to 50 lakhs say 50 uh, 50 billion a okay so this is my first list i loaded into a burp suit here and fire the request as you can see your fuzzing going well 28 handles 58 handles 208 handles 508 handles here you can see there is a no response from server and then suddenly we got a response here and uh, fuzzing is finished now let's look at what happened here here you can see that uh, at boa server was started at pid 1169 on port 80 here you've got extra read in right body read length is minus one and here you got see something got six sir and dumping core in slash tmp as we enable core dump in tmp okay again uh, now you are wondering if server is crashed then how it got up again so in these devices this processes like web application ssh these processes are monitored continuously so why these processes are get monitored continuously to ensure the product is up and running so this uh, procmon again start the binary as our fuzzing was there it again crashed the binary again it started the binary again we crashed it a binary but here you might be seeing that if this can handle uh, 10,000 a right if it is crashing at 10,000 a why it gives you a 200 response again so that's the magic that's that we are going to identify in the next step. as you can see here again you have to create a pattern for this so we have to identify what at what parameter it was getting crash so like if you send a 50,008 to the password one server was not crashing if you send a 50,000 at password 2 servers were not crashing and finally i was able to identify that this password parameter is vulnerable uh, and it is crashing with the 5000 a here you can see right then obviously the first of us uh, next step is create a pattern with metasploit to identify what are the offsets are in use at what level it is getting crash but is it so easy like in windows you connect uh, you attach the process to g uh, win dgp but what about this how you are going to do it here so here you can see target remote that means i am connecting somewhere or wrong screenshot so the next step is as we have identified the architecture of device is mips be that is mips big adn we have to i found out the gdb server as you cannot install a debugger most of the time because lack of space so what we do we installed a server inside the device and we connect with our debugger client using gdb remote command okay so now as we have installed our uh, busybox we can use now wget we don't need to do ftp gate and i hosted this gdb server binary at my server i downloaded it i changed that uh, name of binary and i started a boa here and post starting the boa I attach that boa server process to the uh, GDB server. Here you can see uh, there must be a PID. Uh, the boa server started with PID 1356. 
then I started a GDB server here and I attached the process 1356 and the GDB server was started on port 1337 with IP address 192.168.1.1 .1. it is a device IP and the client side we have to install a GDB multi arc you may use J for GDB paid also I like pawn, DGB, uh, pawn GDB so I download I ran a pawn GDB here and I started GDB multi arc as soon as I uh, started GDB multi arc I can see uh, I can connect to this process here somewhere target remote uh, IP address and port it connects me to this process of BOA so we have set up our debugging communication and here you can see the registers of device so these are the current value of s0 s2 s3 s4 and uh, t4 t5 t6 t7 and all the registers values are here now as we have started everything as we have set up everything again we have to trigger those cache here you can see the easiest way to get easily highlighted what are the registers and control uh, i use a like x41 we know here I fired the crash again uh, after debugging and once the crash occurs here, uh, here somewhere, SP handler mod port XOR read in body that means it got 6 or and as you can see here attach the process 1363. So uh, earlier when I started debugging this device the PID was 80 and now you can see 1363. So how many times we have to debug this device? So it's you, you require lots of patience to you know, perform this operation, but yes, it's satisfactory, it's worth. So here we got a sig bus, and here we got a sig serve, and if you see here, here you can see a a a a a a a a here, uh, here also a a here also a a, and uh, return address PC is also a a. So that means it's easy to identify that the form register S0 to S3. We can control form register T4, T7. We can control and also we can control the return address. Now, for uh, uh, anyone from pawn team here, this is easy stuff for them, right? Now you know what to do. So, but where like we send lots of it, but at what uh, level it is getting? So again, we have to attach the process, and once process is attached, we have to continue, continue, sig pipe here, and we have created a metasploit payload of a uh, metasploit pattern of 5000 here, or 5000 A, uh, means uh, length 5000, and we fired that as a password parameter. And you can see here is the data 393349. So now we have random. Now we have to get those offsets. So after uh, after querying all the offsets, I found the exact match form. One first match I found at 1000, that could be our T4 registers. Second I found at 1004, that is our T7 register. And then here we found a sequentially 32, 28, 32, 36, and 40. 444 4, 4 bytes each. That is our S. That is our register from S0 to s3 these four registers so basically what we can do is is we can put some data here on 1000 to uh, 1004 if required or we can load uh, rop gadgets here uh, from this uh, from this address or we can host our shell code here uh, from s0 to s3 and we can call at our return address that is 1044 so if we call the s0 address where the shell code is hosted at 1044 it could be a RC. Hope you guys enjoy this session. And uh, so uh, this was uh, this is my exploit. Okay, and this is my exploit code. So after debugging a lot, I was able to uh, identify exact offsets. So this is a simple request, uh, and this exploit is written in Python. Simply, it is available online also. So. Uh, this is password 1 xss password 2 xss login type user and password and password is here we are giving a2999 as you remember how we got a first matching offset at 1000 register then i sent here a t4 t4 data and then uh, t7 t7 data here 
and uh, then we have to give some padding here i give a padding till t6 so we have control over t6 register also so t4 t6 t7 here and then uh, i given a padding of k into 8 8 bit padding uh, here for s0 s0 s1 s1 s2 s3 uh, s2 and s3 s3 register and then again some padding for calling our return address so if you see here these values this is s0 s0 s1 s1 s2 s2 s3 s3 and here t7 t7 t6 t6 t4 t4 okay so we are able to successfully compromise this device now building an xy code based on this is quite easy task hope you have enjoyed this section and thanks a lot i am as i am always available with you for question and answer still you have a question and answer or uh, you can ping me or you can contact me at uh, security bees uh, or you can mail me at kingcostobatme.com thanks a lot thanks a lot defcon red team village for giving me an opportunity to share my knowledge thanks a lot